Welcome back to Bioscience for All. This channel is dedicated to teach you the basics about the techniques that are usually employed in the bioscience labs. So if you're a teacher, please feel free to use this material to teach your student about like how is that we function in the labs. If you are just passing by and you think the topic of this video is interesting, thank you so much for spending some minutes watching it. Leave a comment as a question, I will be uh, happy to answer it. Today I want to introduce you to one of the most amazing pieces of equipment I have come across during the last few years. This is a very simple, easy to use, robust flow cytometer. This is a beauty. So this piece of equipment is uh, manufactured by the guys at Beckton Dickinson. I hope I am pronouncing that well. Uh, I am not being sponsored by them. But if anybody in BD happens to uh, come across this video and you think I'm doing a nice work, let me know, give me a call. So I'm going to show you the interior. I think this is a fantastic piece of equipment because it's very robust and very simple to use. Both characteristics are very important when you are distributing an equipment uh, into an educational lab. So it is, very, it is very common that students who are learning how to use a new equipment, they break the equipment and it can be very costly to repair. So the guys at Peckton Dickinson were smart enough to develop a machine which is pretty much unbreakable and it's, it, that's very good because that saves you a ton of money and it's quite affordable, it is simple, but if you are running very simple experiments you will get what you want using this machine. So we will run a small experiment today, I hope you like it and I'm going to show you the parts of the equipment too. Follow me. Flow cytometry is a powerful technology that permits the measurement and analysis of multiple physical and biochemical characteristics of cells. There are three main systems that form part of flow, all flow cytometers. First, the fluidic system, which causes cells to flow in a continuous stream of individual particles across the measurement chamber. Second, the optical system, which consists of a series of lasers, mirrors, splitters and optical filters. Together, they are responsible for shining beams of light to the cells and subsequently directing the resulting light signal toward the electronic system. Finally, the electronic system converts the detected light into an electronic digital signal that can be processed by the computer. Flow cytometers like the BD Accuracy 6 system are suitable to analyze particles ranging from 100 nanometers up to 200 micrometers in diameter. Thus, it is possible to use this to study large viruses, bacteria, as well as eukaryotic cells. For each of these type of particles, we can measure different characteristics, including size, internal complexity, viability, and the presence or absence of the specific molecules in their interior or surface. All of this is possible thanks to the capacity of flow cytometers to closely monitor the phenomena arising from the interaction of suspended particles with an incident beam of light. There are several companies like Thermo Scientific or ACAM that offer researchers a vast selection of reagents to detect biological markers or monitor biological process using flow cytometry. I will post the links to their website so you can check their catalogs. But let's get back to the Acury C6 cytometer so I can show you its parts. As I said before, the instrument is fairly simple. On the left hand side, we have containers for the system fluid, the waste, the cleaning solution and the decontamination solution. Moving to the front, we have a single button used to turn the equipment on or off and, when needed, activate the cleaning cycle. On the right hand side, we have the sample injection port and the sample stage, which can accommodate several types of tubes, including any brand of 12 by 75 millimeter tubes and most microcentrifuge tubes too. By opening the top cover, we can easily access a storage compartment, the rest of the fluidic system and the optical system as well. The Acury C6 is equipped with a 488 nanometers blue laser and a 640 nanometers red laser, both rated at approximately 20,000 hours of life. And also, as you can see, it can hold up to four different filters that are distributed around the measurement chamber. The optical filters are small and can easily be removed by hand without the use of tools. They come in a large variety of bandwidths and center wavelengths. As you saw, the instrument is quite simple, but with two lasers on board and a relatively large gallery of optical filters available, it is more than enough to cover the basic flow cytometry needs of an academic biological science lab. Now, let me show you a quick experiment. The objective of the experiment will be to measure the fraction of live cells in a sample and to determine the effect that the addition of a presumably toxic substance 
as on the cell's viability. In this case, we will use a couple of commercial reagents from Thermo Scientific, which are capable of crossing the membrane of dead cells and binding to the DNA and thus generating a fluorescent signal. First, we will take an aliquot of our cell suspension to determine its concentration. Then, we will dilute the suspension so that we get between 0.1 to 5 million cells per milliliter. After doing the corresponding calculations, we proceed to take the necessary volumes of samples from our cell suspension. We will place these in a set of microcentrifuge tubes and dilute them with fresh media to reach the desired concentration. In this case, six tubes are necessary so that we have the appropriate controls which include cells that will not be treated with neither the toxic substance or the fluorescent reagents. And as always, we should carefully label our tubes. We will now proceed to pellet down our cells using a micro centrifuge, so that we can then remove the old media and wash the cells. The centrifugal force will depend on the type of cells and the experiment. In this case, I will use 200 Gs for 5 minutes. After recovering the tubes from the centrifuge, I will discard the old media in the waste container and then proceed to wash the pellet of the cells using fresh media. Afterwards, we go back to the centrifuge to pellet down the cells for a second time so that we can complete the wash by removing the freshly added media. After discarding the fresh media, we can now proceed to resuspend the cells in a solution with the toxic substance or in phosphate buffer. For this experiment, cells were incubated for 15 minutes and then moved into the flow cytometer room for the last preparation step. Finally, for the last step, we will simply add in the corresponding tube 2 microliters of the cytox reagent for each 500 microliters of cell suspension. Mix gently and incubate cells for 10 to 15 minutes, keeping them in the dark. Remember, we will also have some tubes in which we will not add fluorescent reagent. Once we have turned on the equipment, it will be ready to go after 15 to 20 minutes. This waiting time is important for the laser to warm up and the fluidic and electronic systems to be stable. In the meantime, we will open the software that controls the data acquisition from the flow cytometer and will create a new file and set up our workspace. Collecting data with the Acury C6 is very simple. We just take the sample and resuspend the cells by scrapping the tube on the rack. We homogenize the sample by quickly vortexing and then we can place the tube on the sample injection port. A simple click on the wrong button will start the pump and the cells will begin to flow to the instrument. The software itself is very easy to use. While data is being collected, you can modify the axis to show different parameters, modify the scale, or zoom in and out of the dataset. You can also create new plots to show the information that is being collected in different channels. Depending on the sample you are running at the time, you may want to incorporate different graphs to the workspace. So there you have it, a brief introduction on how to run the Acury C6 flow cytometer. As you can see in the graph on the top right corner, we can already see two populations of cells, the dead ones and the alive ones. In the next video, I will show you how to analyze the data. For now, I just want to say thank you. Please leave a comment and I will see you next time.